For more interesting videos, subscribe to Tech Simplified TV and hit the bell icon for updates. Hey guys, welcome to the third episode of the Q&A series. In this series, we talk about different questions from the viewers of this channel and we try to answer them as to the best of our knowledge. So, without further delay, let's begin. Today's uh, episode is based on a question from Mohan who uh, commented this uh, uh, question in the first episode of Bash Programming in VLSI. He asked for scripting which language I need to learn, Perl or Bash. So the time when uh, this Bash uh, series was published in uh, Tech Simplified TV, that time uh, neither Tickle nor Bash has been published. Okay, so this this was a very uh, good question way ahead of time. So I appreciate his uh, question, and uh, this in turn helps uh, all of you guys. So today we'll be discussing on this topic which particular scripting language is good for you to learn uh, in the field of VLSI. So today's topic. Uh, it, it this question is uh, which scripting language and why so this is for VLSI and uh, this is a very very simple question but it's a very important question at the same time okay because you you are thinking whether I will learn one language two language or what should I do in which direction I should go okay so guys first thing is that you can start from any language and once you learn a language like if i give an example at college level you learn c language okay or maybe way ahead of that or way before that if you learned uh, something like basic or something so you have a taste of what is called programming languages what are the loops conditions etc and the data structures are inside them so that will propel you through the all the four come for next coming uh, programming languages that you are going to learn Okay, I'm not going in a direction of the debate whether it's a scripting language or a compiled language. So I'm generically saying that uh, it's a programming language. Okay, so uh, once you learn one language, it's not very tough for you to uh, pick up a different uh, language. Now, at the basic point, there are two different type of programming language. One is a uh, procedure oriented language like C and another is objective uh, object oriented programming okay which is called oops also which is uh, example good example is c plus plus or java okay so these are things we come across very easily but when you try to enter into vlsi the question you are always wondering that uh, in your mind which one we should learn so in this particular episode we are going to discuss that bash scripting is the very primitive and have become the legacy scripting language so today if you say uh, entering into a vlsi company in a in a renowned vlsi company where they are uh, existing for more than 20 years or 30 years right the you there is a very high chance that you will uh, encounter the bash scripting because the folks from all the years uh, all this much of years back they must have used the bash okay because that time all other programming language was not matured that much uh, amount and uh, whatever you are seeing today or learning today they were not existing at that time okay so uh, this uh, when you okay when you are thinking to work in a cad infrastructure in a vlsi company definitely you have to learn bash, bash. that is the uh, first thing because in um, all the vlsi companies the basic uh, Operating system is Linux, Linux like uh, Red Hat or SUSE, okay, uh, or maybe CentOS in some cases. Uh, in home, you want to learn, uh, you have uh, like Ubuntu or Linux Mint, okay. These things you can easily install and um, you, you can try out the same, learn the same, and use in the same very way for the basic Unix and uh, Bash scripting. Now, uh, what? Uh, let's come back to this point. Uh, when a company was uh, maybe operating for more than twenty years or thirty years, they in their CAD infrastructure they will surely have Bash, and you cannot remove them. So when you have to work in that scenario, you have to learn Bash definitely. And 
if you try to change it from bash to any other scripting language it will be a mammoth task because there will be a lot of processes that are interconnected already you cannot change it so you have to learn bash and for updation of that script you have to update in uh, bash only okay so this is the important scenario why you should learn bash okay i'm telling from my experience where i have seen such scripting uh, interfaces existing there okay so when you enter a company or say suppose you you know python okay and uh, you try to create one flow you have to make sure that it run hand, runs hand in hand with all other pre-existing flows okay that is one challenging task in some cases for updation or amendment you need to do it in the same language like bash in some cases you will uh, you will have your freedom to choose any language of your choice okay but because there is a constraint because all of these vlsi companies they are existing for maybe 20 or 30 years so definitely you will face these things okay so this is why the bash is a legacy language and there will be legacy scripts in the company so you have to learn bash next point so here i have ju just uh, spoke about many detailed uh, scripts uh, uh, bash in pre-existing in major companies so this is already what i have discussed okay since learning ma uh, bash ma you is a must if you think to work in a cad role okay and also another point here just uh, while speaking about this point another thing comes into mind because uh, in many of the vlsi eda tools you need to run some uh, pre uh, commands before you run the exact command so setting some variables and uh, setting some paths for that it's very good that you learn bash and you make your small script for each of your test case runs okay or maybe you create a some kind of short uh, script and which you include uh, i mean you you copy that in your some some uh, uh, work area some special location keep it and from there you instantiate that in each of your script so that you can easily comfortably do the thing so you are running say three different vendor tools and they have their own home directory their own license variables on all of those stuffs so those you can initiate in a script sometimes you it can be done in the dot chrc file but uh, if you cannot initiate them in a chrc file and uh, you need to uh, do it in um, in in scripting it's better you do it in bash and you keep uh, keep the script somewhere uh, accessible location which is uh, uh, across the different disks you are using okay so that will be helpful uh, with that uh, thing uh, let's move on to the next point Perl is mostly used for text reporting and processing scenarios. Now, Perl is a very strong language. Um, I personally used it for, for a long time and I can say uh, whatever task you have been given on Perl, right? Apart from that, you can do use it for your own good. You can make shorthand scripts which will help you for a very repetitive task in day-to-day -day work, work, okay? And uh, one beauty of Perl is that it's regular expression matching which you can use for uh, maybe you are processing a very huge log file and finding out different sections say with errors or warnings you can match regular expressions this is case one scenario two is that if you are comparing in between two different text uh, output files so from one one vendor versus another vendor and you want to compare the results save the results in data structure and then uh, print differences may be outputting in a csv file in that case you will require perl very very um, uh, in a good fashion because perl has this regular expression capability uh, very very strong okay so in bash uh, i i have explained already that what kind of regular expression are there two types of regular expressions are there if you have not come uh, known this uh, yeah, i think it's uh, in the third episode it has been discussed okay so you go and watch out that episode and uh, uh, in the episodes uh, episode of said where i have discussed about said so there i have explained all the uh, basic and advanced uh, uh, regular expressions and perl has the most uh, advanced engine of the regular expression so that makes perl very strong for text report comparison processing uh, uh, or automation it's also so Perl in in multiple way Perl is very um, important and right now the Perl series is ongoing okay so it's uh, it has become I think it is becoming the longest series in in this uh, channel okay so uh, and and let's go to the next point 
Oral has a huge multi-purpose ready-to-use modules from CPAN. This is a very important thing feature of Perl because Perl has uh, has its uh, all the codes uh, and the modules developed pre pre-developed. They are with CPAN. You, if you are using your home computer, you can easily open the C, uh, CPAN shell and install any of the module. Okay. Say if you are working in a company, you cannot do that your own. So you have to ask your Unix admin, okay, to install those Perl modules for your purpose, uh, and uh, you can use uh, after that once your Unix admin installs them. Now, uh, once they install, not only you, everyone can uh, ins uh, use it, okay. So this is a very good thing because uh, in the file chapter, in the file uh, handling episode of Perl, I have shown there is a uh, file colon colon t module okay which you can uh, easily use for creating log files okay so uh, this way there will be lot load means a uh, lot of uh, modules available in uh, cpan so you can use them okay as as per your need okay so Perl is a procedure oriented programming language by BART. So when you code in a Perl, you don't think from the uh, um, point that it's object oriented. Although when you are dealing with Perl modules, uh, you are using the object oriented concept. Okay, but for the basic scripting, you can use it uh, use it as as uh, 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 procedure oriented. That's why if you have learned C, you will find Perl very easy. If you have learned C++, you will find Python as very easy because Python is a object oriented language. Next, Perls provide command line automation for EDF flow development and maintenance. Perl is very, very strong in command line automation. Okay. And the best thing of Perl is that it uh, throws out error or warnings in a very good fashion. So you, if you have a error in your code and you can easily debug it. Okay, I'm not talking about the debugger. I'm just talking about how how your errors are thrown into the terminal. Okay, so this is another very good uh, thing. Python or Ruby is object oriented programming language by BART and used for object oriented scenarios efficiently. That is just I have touched based because uh, guys who are uh, who have learned the C++ or Java, right? maybe in your college days or maybe later on and then you are thinking to enter into the BLSI field that time Python or Ruby you will find very easy because from scratch they are built on the object oriented concept and uh, you can use them in a very same fashion okay I'll not elaborate what is the object oriented programming is because that's a different concept or different question okay so now till this point we have seen different uh, languages and their uh, origin usage and maybe in the time frame when they are came okay tickle is uh, used for major eda tools shell programming so uh, like sta pnr dft etc so in the tickle episode in the first episode i have explained these things very well why you must learn tickle and what is the goal of learning tickle and how tickle is different from any other scripting language in vlsi so now till this bullet we have uh, come across bash perl python ruby tickle so each has a different uh, kind of application so uh, for you learning you can pick any one okay just like i have said that if you have learned c you will find perl to learn very easily and if you have learned c++ you will find python or ruby to pick up very easily so your outlook is that in the application side now another thing is i will tell that in different companies people use different languages there is no de facto standard that pe people are using one particular programming or scripting language in one particular com uh, in every company there is no such uh, de facto thing uh, various companies for years maybe more than 10 years or 20 years they are they are using uh, uh, the language of their choice based on the application how they are using it so uh, when you uh, look for a jd for in a company they will al already uh, depict that uh, what kind of scripting language you must know so basic things that you must know one is bash second is tickle and there are three different uh, uh, languages to choose from perl python and ruby okay so you can pick one procedure oriented and one object oriented okay so this way you can you can become compatible to the anycad uh, role in uh, 
VLSI companies. Now, when I talk about CAD role, it's a very vast. Every company has their own requirement. Different, it will be vary from one company to another company. And in the job description, you will find out what else knowledge they need. So this way you can expand your knowledge. So there is no gen. Uh, the summary is that there is no uh, general uh, language that you can learn. One language it's sufficient. It's not. And once you learn one language, it's very easy to pick up any other language, whether it is a object oriented or procedure oriented. Okay. So this is a summary and uh, this I, I thank Mohan again for asking this question. And this is a very good question for all of you the, who are the beginner of this industry and you will find it in a uh, good way. Uh, that is this Q&A session is for. And uh, I have started this Q&A track to answer such question in detail because these are uh, cannot be discussed in a particular language. Then whoever watching that particular series only get the answer and uh, and others who are watching uh, other different episodes, they will not um, get the answer okay, or the idea. So this the idea of the Q&A track is to answer such questions which are maybe generic, okay, which help you to get the idea like that. And uh, here. Another point is here um, after talking all of these points, uh, GUI automation uh, is nowadays in multiple companies. What is GUI automation? Uh, companies create uh, their own GUI like uh, we, what we can create by TK interface or wish binary okay, inside the tickle TK package or it could be Python GUI or it could be GUI, Qt GUI. Okay. So these GUIs are nowadays also popular because a designer who is working right may not be very much uh, familiar with the Linux command line interface. So many of the uh, design houses, they have their own unit of developing the GUI. And if you want to work in that particular unit, you must also get uh, touch based with the GUI programming. Okay, like uh, TK or uh, Qt or Python GUI. Okay. So this GUI is help up uh, automatically loads all the software uh, licenses and their uh, system variables, all these things in the background. And then you can click and add different files and throw your run. OK, uh, probably sometimes like that it all on all on happens from one co GUI cockpit. Sometimes it happens that the GUI helps you to create several files and then you go to the physical location of this uh, starting files and execute them in your shell or by LSF. Okay, so this could be different scenarios. So here, uh, this is all the enough landscape I have created in, in this Q&A episode. So hope you like it. Uh, Please do like the video if you have liked the content or the discussion and also please comment how what else questions you have. Also, I'll remind you there is a discussion tab in this channel in which you can put your questions, which is may not be relevant to any of the track and it could be a generic question. OK, so your question and the answer will come into the Q&A section. So for now, I'll uh, be saying bye and see you in the next episode.